All right, so in this video, what I'll do is demonstrate how you can use the relation between derivative and tangent lines to solve a very typical geometric problem. Okay, so here's the problem. So suppose I give you a function. In this case, I chose the function to be f of x equals x squared minus 2, and I ask you to find the equation of the tangent line to the graph of that function at a particular point, which of course must lie on the graph of the function. So my point here, I chose to be 1 minus 1. Well, the first thing you should do whenever you're faced with a problem like that is to sketch the graph of the function to have an idea of what you're doing. So in this case, x squared minus 2 is just a very simple parabola that intersects the y-axis at the point 0 minus 2. So what we'll get is something like that for the graph of our function. And the point we're interested in is the point 1 minus 1. So where is this? Well, 1 is here. So 1 minus 1 will be the point here. So this is my point P. And I'm asking you to find the equation of the tangent line. Remember, tangent line is the line that barely touches the graph at this point. And I'm asking you to find this equation. Okay, so let's first do it, do it from a, a geometric point of view, uh, just by looking at secant lines like we did in the general case before. So let me choose another point Q here with coordinates x, f of x. And then first calculate the equation of the secant line. I'm not very good at drawing lines as you can see, but you know what I mean. So the equation of the secant line here going through the point P and Q. Well, the easiest is to use the slope formula. So the slope of the secant line here is just the difference in y coordinates. So I get f of x minus the y coordinate of P, which is minus one, divided by the difference in x coordinates. Now I can replace f of x by my actual function. So I get x squared minus two minus minus 1, that's plus 1, over x minus 1. And what is this? Well, this is just x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. So that gives me the equation or the slope of the secant line here. Okay, that's great, but uh, that's not the tangent line. How do I get a tangent line from there? Well, what I do is the same thing that we explained in the previous video. So I'll just do a limiting process where I send q to be very, very, very close to p. So in other words, if I take the x-coordinate here, I'm going to send the x-coordinate here to be very, very close to the x-coordinate of the point P, which is 1. And from this, I'll get the slope of my tangent line, which I call M. So the slope of the tangent line will be the exact same thing here, but taking the limit where I send the x-coordinate very close to 1. So I can write this as the limit as x goes to 1 of x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. Now, how is that related to the derivative? Well, if you recall the definition of derivative, the derivative of my function at the point 1 is just the limit as x goes to 1 of f of x minus f of 1 divided by x minus 1 minus 1. And if I replace f of x by x squared minus 2, f of 1 by minus 1, I get x squared minus 2 minus minus 1. So I end up with the limit as x goes to 1 of x squared minus 1 over x minus 1, which is indeed the exact same thing as the slope uh, calculated from the geometric point of view. And it better be, because we proved in the previous video that these two things were always the same. Okay, but now what is actually this limit? So, I mean, I haven't defined yet what the limiting process really is rigorously. And, well, you could think that what you can do to evaluate the limit is just replace x by 1 in the expression, right? Because we're really sending x to be very, very close to 1. But there's a problem here. If I replace x by 1, well, what happens? x squared minus 1 becomes 0 here, and x minus 1 becomes 0. So I get something which is kind of 0 over 0. But that doesn't make any sense. 0 over 0 is not well defined. However, this limit is well defined. So there's something tricky going on here. OK, so to be able to evaluate that, we need to know a little bit more about limits. So what I'll do in the next video is give you a very informal definition of what the limit is and how to evaluate or at least guess the answer for a limit like that. And in the next few weeks, we'll study that more rigorously. We'll define what the limiting process is and how to evaluate limits in general.